Hi, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about version control systems and Git in particular and just give a quick intro for how to use it and the a few basic commands. Uh, there's going to be a lot more that I'm not talking about, uh, but hopefully this will be enough to get you started if you want to get into it. So, okay. Uh, so first of all, what is a version control system? Uh, if you're writing an English paper or a group paper or a proposal or something with a, a bunch of people, um, how do you do that? Well, of course, trying to email a file around or something like that is just miserable. Don't don't ever do that. Uh, I've done it before uh, with with faculty recently. It's like, yeah, it's like we're going to email a, a Word file every few hours and somebody else will take a stab at it. Um, you can use Google Docs for something like a proposal, okay? Uh, a group paper, because I can be editing, you know, my paragraph. Somebody else can be working on their part. We could even be collaborating on something. Uh, but we can work independently, and that's fine. Uh, there's not going to be any uh, problem, and Google Docs handles that great. Doesn't quite work for coding, though, right? I'm working on one section of code in a file. We're on, on a group project. Um, maybe, just for example, it might be a, a group project for this very class. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and I'm trying to edit a file. Somebody else is trying to edit the same file. If we were in Google Docs, well, gosh, you know, I'd, I'd be working on line 23 or whatever, and I'll just add the semicolon. I'm like, great, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to compile this file, see if it actually runs. Unfortunately, you're down in line 99, and you're making changes, and it's not ready to compile at that moment. And so Google Docs wouldn't quite work in that situation. We each want our own copy. Um, so that's what version control is about. Um, and it's going to be kind of a, like a, the model of checking out stuff from a library. We're going to have a central repository. Uh, and that's where all the files are going to be. Uh, and then when I work on a file, I'm going to go and check out a file from the central repository, work on it, uh, make the changes I want to do to, to you know, the lines I'm working on, uh, and then go ahead and when I'm done, I'll go ahead and uh, check it back in or commit, uh, commit the file back to the central repository. And here's what one thing that's kind of neat, uh, the way these... Uh, systems tend to work, and code works pretty well this way. Uh, if I go and try to, I'm now two people are editing the file. We both we each check it out at the beginning of the day. I'm working on it. You're working on it. You go ahead and commit your changes back at you know at 10 a.m. I still keep working, and at 11 a.m. I go to commit my copy. Well, I don't want my changes to overwrite yours. Um, with code, it's pretty common that I'll be working up in lines, you know, 30 and 40. You'll be working at lines 80, 90, 100, and our changes are kind of independent. Okay, you're working on one function, I'm working on a different function. Uh, if that's the case, often those changes can be auto-merged, okay? Uh, if, and, and a version control system will do that for you, uh, and that's kind of cool. Uh, now, it doesn't always not guarantee to work, of course, uh, and certainly not if we're working on the same section of the files. Uh, in that case, when I try to commit my version, uh, if I try to change some of the exact same lines that you did, um, it'll go ahead and say, hey, there's a conflict, we need to merge these by hand. If it can auto-merge them, it will tell me, as I, as I try to auto-merge it, it'll say, hey, uh, we're merging your, your code with somebody else's, you better actually run it and make sure everything still works. Um, so I still need to just double-check that. Most of the time, that works pretty dang well. It's actually surprisingly uh, surprising how, to me how well it works. So, okay. So again, sub central repository. Pe people check out files and then commit them back. When you commit back, if two people have made changes on it, you'll try to merge those changes. So, uh, why do we like version control systems? Um, certainly, we can each work on files separately. Uh, if if I have to go on an airplane and I'm too cheap to pay for the wireless, uh, I can go ahead and check it out before I get on the airplane, work on it all the way through the airplane, um, and then when I get connectivity back, then I can go ahead and merge my changes back in. Um, another good thing about version control systems is they maintain a complete history. Every time I check in a file, any time anybody checks in a file, you are prompted for a little log line, a short description of what you actually did, um, and it will keep a history of who checked things out, who committed them, what changes were actually made, and here's the really cool thing. You can roll back to any previous version at any moment, okay? Any previous commit. Um, and that's kind of handy. Um, I remember my senior year as an undergrad, AI class, we had some big project. It was a, 
an AI system for a Mars rover, you know, rule-based system. And I've been working on it for about a week, and I, I got mine is pretty good. There's gonna be a big contest at the end where everybody's rover is gonna be set down at different places on this, you know, model of the the moon. Uh, and then the simulator would run and all run all our rovers, and we could like shoot each other. Or and the big thing was that you didn't want to run out of battery power. Uh, you needed to go and collect mineral samples and make it back. Um, okay. Uh, and I had a pretty good one. In fact, one, one of the hardest things is you're moving out. Uh, you don't know. You want to, you think you can get back through another way and explore more area, maybe pick up more samples, but you don't know how much battery you might run into a ravine or something like that. You don't know if you're going to run out of battery power. And I had a bunch of AI rules that worked pretty well. I was doing, I was consistently uh, getting back with just a little bit of battery power left um, and exploring a lot of territory. 3 a.m. Uh, the day before is due. Um, I made some change. To this day, I don't know what. My rover stopped moving. Uh, I'd go run the simulation, it would just sit there. I'd put in some weird rule or two rules that conflicted or something, I don't know. Um, man, and I spent the next whatever, I was already very tired, and I spent the next 12 hours trying to fix it. Uh, turned in for the final project, nah, my rover didn't move. Yeah, so I didn't do very well on that project. That, that kind of segment. I'm like, oh, if I could just go back to what I had at 2 a.m., that'd be awesome. Um, if I'd been using a version control system, I could have done that. So, Okay. Great. Uh, let's talk about distributed version control systems. Uh, so at old school, there are these, what I just described, uh, central repository, and people would use these, and there's programs like RCS and CBS and Subversion that did that. Um, and then, you know, Web 2.0 came around, everything should be distributed, crowdsourced, all that sort of stuff. So uh, distributed version control systems say, hey, everybody is going to go and there's not going to be one repository that is the canonical version that people have to check in and out from. Everybody can make their own repository. Um, I can go to the source code for, for Mozilla and clone their repository and get my entire copy of the repository and do whatever I want with it. And it's a full-fledged, after I do that from the software's point of view, there's no knowledge of which repository is better. Um, now in practice, everybody in the Mozilla thing does sort of use a certain repository and make their changes to that one that is used for them to distribute their code. but uh, that's just sort of their social agreement. It's not built in, baked into the software. So uh, Git is a very popular current system. Um, we're going to use the centralized model. So if you go and read about Git, there's several different workflows and models you can use. Um, we'll use the, the centralized model where, again, the idea is the whole group will get together and sort of all agree, hey, this is going to be the one central repo. Okay. Um, even though technically the software doesn't care about that or enforce that in any way. So, uh, so what, are you gonna, what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and hear some different terms. Uh, we're going to, you're working on a project. You, you come to a project, people have been working on it. The first thing you'll do is clone their central repository. It's a one-time task. <coughs> and you clone it onto your machine. Uh, and that gives you a working copy of all the files. It also will give you, I mean, you will have a local repository a full-fledged technical repository with all the commit history. You can roll back to any version you want on your machine at any time. Uh, so it gives you both of those. You'll have a working copy and your local repository. And usually we'll just look at the working copy of the files. Uh, you won't actually directly go look at the repository yourself. And all this is separate from the central uh, canonical repository that the team is using. Okay. So what do I do? After I clone the central repo, repo, I'll go and change my working files, make all add all sorts of cool features, and then I'll go ahead and we say push, push the changes back to the central repository. Okay. Um, of course, other people are going to be changing the central repository. I want to get their changes. I'll go ahead and pull their changes from the central repository, and I'll maybe do that fairly often, uh, several times a day, perhaps. Uh, Okay, I'll probably push back to the central repository only when I've successfully added some feature and all works and is all tested. So, okay. Uh, yeah. I had one other uh, good advantage of, of using version control systems, and now it's, uh, it's escaped me. It will come back in a second, I'm sure, right after I finish the video. Okay. 
Uh, so how are we gonna, if you're using Git, you wake up in the morning on some project, what's your, your general workflow? Uh, you wake up in the morning, go start working, you pull any changes that have been made overnight to the, um, uh, to the central repository. So the first thing you do is you know, you'll say, you know, pull any changes. Uh, you'll edit any files just in your local workspace. Uh, okay. I'm working in my working copy. Okay, I'm making changes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and commit them to my local repository. So this might be every time I successfully compile. You know, I make some changes, didn't compile. Oh, fix that, didn't compile. Oh, hey, now it compiles again. It's still not running. The feature isn't working that I want to implement. I'm not ready to send it back to the central repo. Uh, I'll go ahead and commit it to my local repository. Just It's just on my computer. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And I'll keep doing this, and then I'll, I'll do this, you know, for a few hours. And then, okay, I got this feature working. I'm ready to send it back for everybody to share and then get be able to use my changes I just made. So at that point, before I actually push it back to the central repository, I'm going to pull again. And I do this just because I like to do it as a separate step. I like to say, hey, you know, while I've been working, people have made changes to the central repo. Go and pull them into my copy. It will change my local uh, uh, repo. It will change my working copy of the sessions as well, automatically, uh, Git will. Uh, and then I'll run it again to make sure that my feature really does work as with everybody, the changes other people have made today. Uh, and then I'll do a push, and push it back to the central repository. So. Okay, so what I try to remember in my mind is, you know, pull, commit, pull, push. Pull, commit, pull, push. And that step number four, the pull again, uh, not really needed. When you try to push, uh, it will integrate it with any other changes. Uh, but a simpler, if you do have a conflict, uh, you'll suddenly be left in a, you know, a fuzzy state where you're trying to commit something, you're halfway through committing it or, or pushing it back. So I like to, again, do the pull as a separate step. So I think number four is the step that's not obvious to pull again uh, before pushing. It makes things work more smoothly. So. Okay, pull, commit, pull, push. Um, oh yeah, okay. So uh, Git, and we'll, we'll show some examples in a moment. I'll actually go and edit some files. Uh, Git is actually the way it's set up uh, from the command line. We're going to be using the command line version. There are GUI tools as well, but you should be able to use the command line uh, version. Uh, it's actually a family of commands. You say git followed by some particular sub, you know, some particular git command followed by the other options. Uh, so I might say git clone and then give the repository, the central repository I want to clone. So uh, that you know, command there on the screen is a would be a valid command if I if there was a repository at that exact name uh, that's close to a real repository. But sample dot git is not a, a real name, at least not yet. Maybe I'll make one before I publish these slides. Okay, so you might just say git pull. That's an example of a git command that doesn't have any options. Okay, uh, git status is a common thing I might run. Uh, it just tells me, hey, what files uh, have changed in my working copy uh, separate from my repository, changes I haven't committed yet. If I do have a file that's changed, um, there's a nice command, git diff, and I, the way I usually use is git diff and then some file name, and it will show me the line-by-line -line comparison of the file in my working copy that I've been working on the last couple of hours versus what's in the, the, my local repository. Okay. Git diff you can use it in many different ways. You can also go ahead and say, hey, show me the difference between my file and what's in the central repository 10 versions ago or something like that. Um, but I, I tend to use that a little bit less. Uh, one minor thing, uh, I'll mention this. Uh, if you make a new file, you're working away, and hey, I'm going to go add some more, more files to the repository, uh, just making the file in, that, in your working directory doesn't add it to the repository, OK? Uh, it's not actually part of the repository unless you explicitly add it with the git add command. Okay, uh, why is that? Um, it seems like, gosh, if I make a new file, yeah, it should be part of the project. I'm sitting right here in this directory. Um, yeah, think of like a Java file. You have a Java, you know, so-and-so.java. When you compile it and run Java C, you'll get so-and-so.class. And that class file should not be part of the repository. Only the Java file should be part of the repository. 
uh, .class is a, it's a derived file. You wouldn't want to keep that around in the, the file history. So. Uh, so that's why files are not part of the repository unless you explicitly add them. OK. Um, when I'm ready to, again, commit my changes to the local repository for my working files, uh, yeah, git commit dot. OK, people have you'll read different uh, ways to use commit and a lot of say, hey, commit dash M with a message and so on. Um, here's why I like git commit dot. Uh, I don't specify a message on the command line. So when I try to commit, it'll say, hey, it will pull up a little editor, maybe Vim or something uh, and say, hey, just please enter a one line description. OK, uh, fine, then I'll go ahead and do it. Here's what I like when I say git commit dot. It will also show me a list of dot meaning the current directory. Uh, it will show me it's going to commit everything in the current directory. I tend to un work in units of files in the same directory. Uh, so I could just say git commit and then the one file I've been working on. In practice, yeah, there's that one file I was working on, and then I made two very small changes to other things in the directory. Git commit dot reminds me of that and commits all of them, and my single commit message can mention all, all of those. So, so I, I prefer git commit dot to git commit dash m message and a a single file, um, but you know whatever works for you. Uh, and then finally, you might again, just, uh, for example, you might then do a git push. Notice that uh, once you've cloned something, a repository remembers where it was cloned from. So git pull and git push, you don't need to remind them where the central repository is. Uh, it pulls and pushes to the central repository or the place it was cloned from. And that's awfully handy. So, okay. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and come back and try some examples in the next video.